Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your favorite series here on YouTube, Guess the Elo. If you're watching this at some point during the World Championship when it was recorded, hi, I hope you're having a great time. And if you're watching this at some point in the future, hi, I hope you're having a great time. This is one of the only episodes of the series that I've actually recorded completely offline, not on stream, because I actually had a really bad headache all day and I didn't know when I was going to stream or record a video. Let me know your feedback in the comments if you like the lower energy but more instructional value, or, or if you hate it. And before we get into the games, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Fabulous. Fabulous is the number one self-care app to help you build better habits and achieve your goals. We've only got one life to live, so why not be the best version of yourself? The app is rooted in behavioral science, specifically the concept of using small tasks to then achieve big picture things. Yes, that might mean something like drinking water or eating breakfast every day or making your bed, but in the long run, that might mean something like relieving anxiety. Fabulous has tons of features. There's journeys, which take a certain period of time where you build up the basics to achieve a certain goal, like maybe sleeping better or concentrating and focusing more. There's daily coaching, where you can check in on if you learn something new or achieve the goals of the previous day. Then there's challenges, which help you achieve something in a short period of time. And then you can journal that and see how you feel about it, and you can even challenge your friends. And speaking of friends, Fabulous has something called Circles, which is like a mini social platform where you interact with others on the app, see how they're doing. It's honestly a really wholesome vibe about the whole thing. And that's why I like Fabulous. I think it's an amazing 100% personalized app that lets you go at your own pace, and you use this concept of building up small habits to making big picture change in your life. And so, there's a link in the description you should click on it and get 25% off a fabulous subscription. What are you waiting for? Go make yourself feel fabulous. All right, we're beginning our journey with game one. Gotham Sub has got the black pieces. It's already weird doing this offline. I'm gonna have to make a lot more jokes because I don't have the chat to interact with. C6. Okay, uh, this looks like a player who just like learned the Karo Khan and really wants the Karo Khan, even against the Queen's Pawn. Admit it, you've done this. I actually did this as well back in the day because uh, I used to play the Slav defense, but I liked the Karo Khan more than the Slav defense, but I figured this gave me both. But actually, the London is the problem here. But maybe Black has this worked out. Like, maybe Black is going to play a very early Queen B6. I don't know. Uh, it's not like a great strategy, but D4, C6 is viable. And there you go. Look at that. B3, Knight F6. Yeah, I don't hate this at all. Um, I have the eval bar on, by the way, I don't have the move suggestions, but I'm just gonna tell you, like, you know, black, white, white is always a little bit better. Um, okay, bishop g4 is not a bad move at all, developing with tempo. The, finish this, nice. So far I'm getting, like, okay, a3 is weird. Um, b3 had to be played or else the pawn would, I mean, a3 just is a weird move. I mean, black's next three moves should be this and no other questions. Okay, c4 is not terrible, just castle, good. I feel, I'm, I feel like black is a very high-rated player. If white now plays b4 to continue growing, I'll be happy. Bishop e2 is also reasonable. Knight d7. And now white should, like, completely finish developing. But I saw from the move list that white plays knight e5. So, in general, you really don't want to make these forward-lunging moves in a position that's completely fortified and defended, uh, particularly when you haven't castled, because now the initiative completely flips. Now black can trade two times and immediately attack. So, for example, this trade happens. This is definitely the best move because you know white's next move. If white takes like this, I... You're gonna go knight d7, and all of a sudden everything is weak. And actually, as you see from the eval bar, black is winning because black can just immediately begin assaulting the pawn structure. So th this is very common. I mean, anytime you can split pawns like this, the whole game now becomes about attacking those pawns and making them really weak. Um, after knight e5, bishop e5, actually the exact same move. Knight d7, b6, a5, before black has, uh, white has a chance to stabilize. And, I mean, white's position can fall apart pretty quickly. You know, white can play like b5, thinking that they're avoiding all the problems. And then after rook c8 already holding everything together, you're fine. The only reason this is not good is because c6 is pretty strong. And uh, you have to be a little careful not allowing this pawn to march through your position down to c7. But... This is already far more instructional than any episode of Guess the Elo. Queen a5 is just not a very good move at all because that just plays directly into the building. Yeah, and now you either go back or go forward. Okay, you go back. Castles. Oh my god. No, 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 no. This is terrible. Explode the center. Take. Okay, I would have... Now I would have taken the other way, but fine. Uh, take. Okay, 94. Take, take, take. Good. And, and probably now you need to go assault the pawns. 
Okay, this is just way too slow. I mean, Queen C7 is just way too slow. But Rook D8 is good, and 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 now you need to play Rook D5. Uh, if Black plays Rook D5 here, I'm getting 1800, 17, 1800 vibes. Okay, no Rook D5. The reason why Rook D5 is so strong is because now there's no B pawn push. Uh, and uh, anytime you can just kind of like double up on a file and completely control a square, Rook D5 is always the way to go. It's going to be the kind of the yeah. Now 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 we're just getting sort of like odd confusing pawn battle on this side of the board uh queen c5 is a good move queen c6 i wouldn't take queen d4 wow uh now if you take this there's this uh now white is maybe even better practically speaking the engine is saying it's equal but from a practical standpoint oh well okay well well i mean if you lose the pawn immediately then yeah that's not gonna that's not good and uh, there might even be bishop f6 here. Although your rook is hanging too. Okay. Does... Okay. White is, uh, white is so unlucky that rook b1 isn't anything. Oh, just take it. It's over. Just... Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, you can't... You... Oh. 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 Oh, nice move. No. What? Okay. I mean, that wasn't, com that wasn't necessary, but... Okay. Okay. Just keep giving checks. Just keep giving checks. Nice. Lose the rook. Win the queen. Nice. 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 Not, not, not nice. This is not nice anymore. What the hell is this? What? Okay. All right. We got there in the end. It was messy. It was, uh, it was, okay. That was, that was, I don't know what the hell that was, but that was actually a very decent game. Very solid game. A couple of obscure moves, but more or less solid moves in the beginning of the game. Like, not completely terrible. Yeah, I mean, I have, like, very few things to base this game off of, right? Like, um, knight, some, some knight battling in the center of the board. I mean, I'm getting, like, strong, like, 1400 vibes from this game. Uh, I could be completely mistaken. I mean, maybe, maybe, like, 1300 from that end game. But overall, I... You know, it, it was sort of like meaningless middle game jostling and then a couple of blunders, like queen d4 instead of queen... But even queen c6, there might be this, so... Or or even rook b5. So, uh, I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna say between 13 and 1400, I think. I, I almost want to subtract, like, 100 points because of rook b1. Like, rook b1 was really a bad move. Uh, and the end game conversion, but maybe there was low time. So I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to say closer to 13 than to 1400. That's what I'm going to say. Okay, so as always, we need to go to the uh, other screen. Uh, and uh, give me a sec. I should have cropped this earlier, but... Um, yeah, so 13... For okay. So I was basically completely correct. White is 1392 and black is 1423. And you can't see it. I have to crop it down. Happens. Happens to the best of us. Uh, there you go. Wow. Okay. Well, uh, a decent start. I mean, very solid. Like, two people who kind of knew what they were doing. I, I guess. Allegedly. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, allegedly. Uh, now I'm hoping for just utter chaos for the rest of these games. So for this one... Uh, oh, God. Uh, another London. I really tried to not have too many Londons. Um, Knight F6. All right. Um... Fine, fine. I mean, against the against this, I, I like to just play knight c3, queen d2, put the second pawn like this, but... Okay, clearly black knows something I don't, because they're doing it with e3. Now h4, h5 is actually not bad at all. That's terrible. So, you never want to put bishops in the center if they can just very easily get hit with enemy pawns like this. You just don't want to do that, because you're just helping your opponent develop. Um, wow, e6 is also an atrocious move. What? is black doing what oh my god if you wanted to do that you should have played that immediately what 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 is that what is the what is this what why why where what okay I, I i you know what i don't like i don't like that white is just getting like i don't if white's next move is d5 i'm gonna be so mad White just needs to get the king out of the way and then, like, go on an attack. That's what white needs to do. I don't hate h3. 
Oh my god. Okay, so this is a danger level, um, but there is just en passant here, and you just win this night. I mean, you just win the night. You also could take g4 and just belligerently attack your opponent. All right, white not familiar with en passant. I'm getting like 900 vibes, maybe. Oh, knight takes f2. There is the content. There is the... Okay, so... What? What? What it... What? But... Why? What? What? Wow, I love how you can't even take this, because it's pinned, like, the lu the luckiest move ever. Knight d5! Wow, look at this angry, just chopping it down the middle of the board. It's mate, it's gotta be a mate, so- Oh, that- it look at that, oh my god. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. Everything just- oh god, it just all works. Okay, I mean, this game, this game was just weird. Like, if I'm being, I mean, this just, what was this? This was, this was just a weird game. I mean, this person should use the app that I plugged in the beginning of this video. Use Fabulous. This person just needs a better routine. The one with the black pieces. I mean, for the first, like, five moves, I mean, black looked like they were a genius. I mean, it looked like this person had watched the King's Indian video and then went to play it and then was like, I keep losing, I hate Gotham's YouTube videos. Yeah, I, I don't know what the hell this was. I mean, you, you need to put more pawns in the center. You don't... D this is not... Like, white played well, with the exception of not castling, but I'll forgive them because they were up a queen on move 11. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if black is any higher than 800, I'm just mad. I, like, I think between 8 and 900, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste any more time. Yeah, so black is 875, which is... It, black is actually higher rated than white. White is 856. And this was a 10-minute game. Yeah, so uh, this person might be the nicest guy ever. I don't know. I um, think it's a dude in a hat. I think it's a dude. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I, I, like that was just awful. That was... I mean, I... Yeah, anyone below this rating now should just think... Yeah, I... Okay, I mean... Anybody who is below that now should just get confidence. That was just that was just awful. It was like four normal moves and then just I mean completely off the deep end. And it was mainly because they played so cramped. Uh, they they did not take any space with the pawns. That was what they did wrong. And when you suppress yourself like this and you don't put anything out, you're just gonna get desperate. Like you're just gonna try to. Like, by the way, that was not even a bad move. D five. And then they, they should have just done this. And then c5 and knight c6, but it was too late. You, you, you can't put six out of eight pawns on one color because you're just not... You're going to have a huge imbalance like on the other color, right? You're just going to be weak on the dark squares. Yeah, terrible game. I mean, just not good at all uh, by the other person. All right, Gotham sub in game number three. Uh, ooh, wow. This is like big boy, big girl stuff right here. This is... Uh, wow. Wow. Uh, bishop c4, though, not good. That's just not where you want the bishop in the Sicilian. It's just going to get hit with a, a or... It's going to get hit with pawns. You you don't really want that. And speaking of which, I mean, black just right on cue. I mean, b5, that's beautiful stuff. White should probably play d4. I'm going to get a lot of intel about white's rating just from seeing how they use their pawns here. Okay, yeah, that's just not good at all. I mean, d5 just equalizes at any moment, like... Bishop e7 and castles in d5 or d5 and then... All right, let's see. Okay, d5 right away is is fine. Yeah, just block. Nothing special. Castle. Oh my god. What the... F why? No, but like why? I mean, you were doing so well. You were doing... Like, you just played like a GM. I mean, just do this and then it's over. I mean, bishop comes out. Next is knight d4. Like, power... I mean, why b5? White's entire setup prevents this move. Why would you play it? You can't play that move. And now, like, bishop g4, like, nothing happened. I mean, as if you're not completely lost. You know what the craziest thing is that you've given? You've given your opponent bishop takes d5, which is just an absurd tactic. Uh, the point is that if rook takes rook, there is check and the king slides over but now can't castle. And white is apparently winning here despite sacrificing an exchange. But if you take with the knight, there is uh, rook a8, queen a8, c4, and you can't move the knight because knight c7 is a fork. I mean, it's ridiculous. If 
If they play bishop d5 after like seven seconds of thinking, they're cheating. Um, you know, bishop g4, bishop f4, and we're looking to go to c7. Okay, it's not too late to castle. Thank God. h3, bishop back to h5, queen to e2 attacks, I don't know. What does it attack? Something here? Not nothing. Okay. Um, you're still just acting like you haven't absolutely thrown away a pawn for no reason. C4. Okay. Rook B. Okay. Um, yeah, the position's like barely holding together here. After CD5, Knight D5, this bishop is just going to get super active and it's going to be really unpleasant to be, to be playing with black here. Uh, okay, well, not if you do that. Not if you just give away the bishop. That's, that's not... Uh, knight c7 is not a bad move. Attacking the queen. The queen's got a... Not there. That was a mis misclick. Maybe queen f5, maybe queen b3, maybe queen d7 or d8. All right. Queen d7. Knight a6. Attacking nothing at all because that's defended. Uh, the top engine move here is rook c8. There's no chance black plays this move. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know what rook c8... Wow! Not only did you play a move that allows knight c5, which wasn't possible after bishop c5, but now is possible because your rook is there, you've also just lost the game. I mean, knight c... Yeah, knight c5 just wins. That's so tragic. How could you do that to yourself? You, you were just in a situation where you had absolutely nothing to worry about. Um... And uh, now bishop c5, queen e8. Oh my god. And if you don't move, oh my god. Oh my god, that's... That, wow. Bishop f3. That's a good attempt, actually. That's not, that's not the worst move in the world, because if queen f3, you have this. And if gf3, what do you have? Nothing, probably. Okay, but is black actually going to do queen h3? Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, white is still winning after queen e4, but I don't think white plays that. Oh my god, knight d4. Oh my god, knight d4. Oh my god, and knight f3. And that's it, white is gonna lose a queen. Oh, 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 just, just, that's it. I mean, just queen. It's actually very tricky, because after take, 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 you lose the rook. Yo, black had such tunnel vision that black decided to take the pawn instead of the queen. Black was so tunnel vision on taking the pawn, black did not actually realize that they were attacking the queen to begin with. Oh my god. Now take, take. Okay, now you just... Oh, 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 you take the bishop. Okay, king f8 is like horrible, but it, it, you, you have to see this. You have to see queen g5 check, which is... I think they get a bit of a pass, yeah? I think king f8 is like pretty human. Uh, now... Ooh, oh, oh, check. Check. Oh my god, is it, is it a draw? This might be the first draw in... in, in wow. That might be the first draw in Guess the Elo history. I don't think, this has been 33 episodes. Have we seen a repetition of moves? Someone go watch the tape. 33 times five. All right. That's 165 games we've looked at in this series. And I'm not sure that's ever happened. I also could be completely misremembering, but. Um, wow, what an absurd game. Okay, so Bishop C4. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, black played a Sicilian, and generally, the, the level at which you start playing Sicilian when you think you kind of know what you're doing is like 12, 1300. Like, that's like when you get, you get confident, you start watching things, you get like a sweet, uh, short and sweet course or whatever. Um, okay, so, hmm. But B5 was an atrocious move. And then, then this is like a fascinating, I mean, H3, it was a relatively solid game. Some like logical moves were played. Knight C7. Um, yeah, seeing that is amazing. Rook E8, so folks, the way you avoid mistakes like this, is you think about maximum danger, right? And you, this is really hard to see because there's a lot of moving parts here. Um, you sort of mentally realize this is not possible and then suddenly you make it possible. Um, great job here by black to get danger levels on the board, by the way, like both of our queens are hanging. That's excellent. So I, I, that's why I think situational awareness here, like not just being like, oh my God, I'm losing. Oh my God, I hate chess. Oh my God. Like, you know, to have the state of mind to be like, oh, I just gave myself an opportunity just by attacking a queen while my queen was also under attack. I think that's pretty high level. And then maximum danger, looking at how you can get attacked from a maximum standpoint, like getting the most value, then not taking the queen because... 
reasons, which is why, yeah, I'm getting, um, getting probably like 1200 vibes from this game, I think. But, uh, with like one brilliant move, which is bishop takes f3. Like, if there's a brilliant marker on chess.com, it's probably going to be bishop takes f3 here. Uh, rook e8 is just too obscure of a move. Yeah, I'm thinking like 1200. Very, actually, very similar level to the last game, but maybe slightly lower or slightly higher. I, I, I really don't know. Let's go see. Wow. 1266 versus 1308. I was kind of right. I said it was kind of like last game, but slightly lower. Then I also said slightly higher, but we can skip that part. And okay, nobody got a brilliant move tag, although I feel like somebody should have. That, was, that wasn't bad at all, actually. That, that was, uh, yeah, I mean, white doesn't know how to play against the Sicilian, but like I said, 12, 1300 is around the level that black is starting to play like Sicilians and thinking that they're smart. So shout out to Red Stake um, for being brave enough to try to play the Sicilian. If you play the Karl Khan, you'll probably get like 1500, but God bless you. You want to play the Sicilian, you, you, you do what you want, you know? All right, so fourth game. Fourth game, we've got D4, D5. And white either has no idea how to play openings or is trying to play some sort of Jubava Prie London or the Verisov. I don't know, but black plays this. So now the same logic applies to black. Either black has no idea what they're doing or black is trying to play some off-center gambit. So DC5, D4. Okay. Um, yeah, generally when you're gambiting pawns off-center like this, like a flank pawn, you want to dominate the center. So something like this, in a perfect world. This is not great because white can still kind of chip away, but that's the way you gambit early on. Um, so queen a5 check is just not a good move at all. Uh, queen a5 is a horrible move uh, because you're just allowing your opponent to consolidate, you're not winning any pawns back, and your queen just becomes a permanent target. Like even now, if you begin moves like f5, uh, I can go danger levels on you, and I can just very quickly get all my pieces into the game. Oh, f5 actually got played. Okay, knight g3. Knight, knight g3 is a little, a little bit sober because you, now you lose the pawn back and your, your space advantage is obscure. Like, I understand how to get an advantage here with white. It's, you know, moves like e4, knight f3, bishop out, but it's a little bit tricky with white. And if, if, you, if, you, if you start doing stupid stuff, you get in a bad position. Okay, e3 takes. Uh, yeah, but see, now you're allowing all of this. That could be very scary. Oh, that's... That's so depressing. Why would you queen trade on move nine in just a clearly worse position? Oh, obvi well, duh, because you knew your opponent was going to just one mover. I mean, just a pure one move blunder. Take, take, and yeah, wow. Gotham sub, that is inexcusable. Th that is inexcusable. I mean, honestly, like that, if this is anything more than a five minute game, you just can't do that. You just can't do this. I mean, you just can't. Like, you just can't. I, that guy, you gotta look around. You just gotta look around. You can't go, ooh! You know, you can't just, oh my god, bishop c4. Yeah, now, now the bishop is gobbling. All right, rook's gotta go. The only hope white has here is more development. Like, very quickly double up the rooks, just more development, or attack with your pawns. People hate getting pawn stormed. Not, oh, 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 suddenly, suddenly some juices are flowing here, potentially. All right, I don't hate that at all. Yeah, I mean, black has four pieces out of six on the back rank. That can't be good. Oh, 96, and I'm not even sure white is worse anymore. Okay. Now white is, like, winning. I mean, we had the same thing last game. Don't get yourself paralyzed. You see what happened last game? Black got themselves paralyzed by putting the rook behind the bishop and tying their shoes together. Same thing happens now. Now you can't move the knight, the rook, or the king. He can't move anything, and bishop b5 is game over. Bishop e6 is game over for black. Knight e6 is game over for black. I mean, you just don't do this. Don't temporarily just put a rook behind a piece and go, I'm solid. You're not. You're not solid. e5. All right, well, I, I personally, I think one of these moves is going to happen, but maybe knight e6. Okay, yeah, I predicted correctly. Yeah, knight e6 has to go because you get the rook and the knight. If you do this, bishop f5 protects. Uh... Yeah, yeah, now you're losing again, but now you're winning again because black had to go knight f7 to protect knight e5. But people do this all the time. They just play these one movers like me attack horse, me smart. Now horse goes here, you not smart. Now you're losing because rook takes d7, but is white going to do that? No, of course not, but this is also fine. Why did... What? What? Why? 
Why did... Why did you... Why... Okay. Okay. Oh! No, but this is inexcusable. I mean, the person has two pieces left. How are you blundering pieces to two pieces? There's two pieces. It's like you're walking in a, in, 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 on, on, on a massive highway, five lane. I don't know why you're doing that. Don't do that. And there's two cars and they're not even driving. They're standing still and you still get hit by one of them. I mean, what are you doing? Oh, oh God. Oh, oh God. En passant. Oh, okay. Now you can't move your rook at all. Now this night went from the worst night of all time to the best night of all time. And oh my god, and you're just making it a bishop endgame. Why? Why you but you can't play endgames. You're like 700. How how did you just how 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 did what 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 why whoa whoa dude? Oh my god, dude. Wait, what? What happened? The game over? Did black lose on time? What happened here? Well, what is this? Okay, I mean, I don't know. Um, I mean, if this is in the four digits, both these players need to be slapped. Um, uh, wow. Um, uh, fo folks, I, I, I've, got, I've got no effing clue. I got no clue. Uh, I feel like Dora the Explorer. You know, what do you think the ratings are? Oh my god. Um, I mean, there was some competency behind the move, so I want to say like probably 900, like 8 to 900. I'm gonna say 8 to 900. I'm gonna say like, like mid to high 800s. If there are a thousand or more, I, I god help them. I mean, honestly, god help them. No. Okay, 1550 versus 1600, but bullet. But I guessed one half of this intelligence level. Well, okay, intelligence level rating, not the same thing. Not the same thing. Although, the higher rating you have, the higher chance you have of finding a partner in life. So, everybody get their ratings up. All right? Just the truth. This was a disaster. These people did not play anywhere remotely close to this level, not even for bullet standards. Not even for bullet standards. I mean, bullet is mildly more understandable, but Jesus Christ, people. Jesus Christ and every other historical slash religious figure. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, wow. Sorry. Sorry, religious folks. I know, I know you don't like when I... I respect your opinions. But as a form of expression of my disgust i must use such phrases anyway final game of guess the elo hopefully we provide good content oh this is like so this is great we have a two nights carl con this is like a professional chess opening all right every bozo in here better pay attention nice this is exactly what i recommend in my carl con course uh, among other things Okay, it took five moves and we have our first we have our first dillweed moment. I don't understand what that move is at all. I mean, maybe this is some engine move. I don't know. Um, I don't know why you would ever play that. Bishop g4 is not bad. Okay. Queen e2 is pretty terrible. Uh, I would just go e6 here, but the engine also likes knight d5. Okay. Y Somehow white is like not playing completely insane. I don't like queen f4 just because I don't want to put my queen out there. I would probably just go queen d8. Yeah, in general, this game will be instructive on how to deal with, like, stupid aggression. Like, this is just not good. The Karakhan is way too solid to kind of succumb to such stupidity. <coughs> just don't hang your queen. Nice. You're attacking this. Great. Knight d4. Uh, queen d5 is just probably simple and strong, attacking both and forcing some retreat. Good. Is this... Is this just the whole game? Like... Do you just win the rook? I don't, I don't like when you guys submit games where you just, you just win. I'm going to be very upset if you just easily win this game without any sort of fight at all. I don't like that. I, this is not... Guess the elo is not to brag. It's to create content. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. So you just won all their pieces. And... Oh. Oh. Oh, you, you didn't quite win all their... Oh. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, okay, good, 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 good. I don't know why you didn't. Okay, so um, I'm not going to lie to you. This is a very uneventful note to end on. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm going to have a very stern talking to with my subscriber. This was supposed to be like, uh, you know, like a, like a back and forth struggle. I mean, it just kind of was an example of a person that kind of knew the opening and, and white just played really aggressively. And black just, you know, was very calm, kept their pieces safe, didn't hang their queen in one move and looked for maximum danger, right? Like, and found this. And I don't know why white didn't do this. Instead, white just hung a rook and then hung a game. But um, yeah, not, 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 this is not exciting uh, at all. I mean, if these people are the same level, like black probably played this game like a solid 1600, like very 16, 1700. But white played like a 1000, honestly. So, I'm going to go with 1600 because mistakes happen, I guess. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. 1600. I, 1600 is this game, 1600. Yeah, so 1460, and, and the guy named Total Noob is 1470. And it's a fitting name. Admittedly, a very fitting name for a person that hung a rook on move 14 as a 1470. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the secretly recorded episode. And uh, let me know if you want it like this or if you want the more high energy one, including chat, memes, and all that good stuff. And I'm going to go have a stern talking to with the subscriber who ended this on a very anticlimactic note. But this video has shown you that just about anybody can be 1470, blundering pieces like this in a 10-minute game.